गुड आफ्टरनून वेलकम टू मिथ कैप रेडार आम सोनम भूत्रा विथ मी इज ऑलवेज इज विवेक अयर इट्स अ डाउन डे डिस्पाइट द हैंड ओवर दैट वी गॉट फ्रॉम वॉल स्ट्रीट एंड इट इज कंटिन्यू टू सी लोअर लेवल सिंस द मॉर्निंग सो निफ्टी इज डाउन ऑलमोस्ट अ टू हंड्रेड पॉइंट कट इज वॉट वी आर सींग देर मिथ कैप्स आर फॉलोइंग फर्दर सेवन सेवेंटी फाइव पॉइंट्स गॉन देर एंड बैंक निफ्टी यू नो एवरी वन बीन टॉकिंग अबाउट मे बी दैट कुड बी द रिवर्स ट्रेड बट बैंक दे आर अंडर प्रेशर इज वेल वन पॉइंट वन परसेंट गॉन Absolutely right. The entire, you know, the breadth of the market yeah. has uh, worsened quite significantly. If you see the advanced decline ratio, that too is under significant pressure, and the broader end of the markets are, are underperforming. Now, quite a lot lined up on the show. Let's start off with the top headlines. The Sensex and the Nifty extend morning losses on the Lal Street, while broader markets underperform as the mid-cap index trades with over a one percent cut. Auto and realty are the big drags, but IT eats out some gains. Bajaj Auto Management's comment on industry slowdown fears spooks the two-wheeler stocks. Management tells CNBC TV 18 the festive season has seen a soft start, and they hope for a pickup by the end. Bajaj Auto is the top Nifty loser. The auto index trades with 3% cut. Emphasis rallies in a weak market as second quarter numbers beat estimates. The company also maintains its above industry average growth forecast and a margin guidance of 14.6 to 16%. Nalco surge is in trade following China's housing ministry's comments that they will monetize urbanization projects. The stock also rises on tailwinds from aluminium major Alcoa's best quarterly numbers in 3 years. SRF is under pressure today as brokerage firm UBS downgrades the stock to a sell rating from a buy rating earlier. Downgrade is driven by ongoing growth challenges, weak demand in the agrochemicals and soft refrigerant gas demand as well as prices. Okay, all right. Those are the top headlines. Uh, but you know, we have been talking about that big pressure come by in the mid-cap space, the advanced decline ratio in favor of the declines. So this is our segment, mid-cap movers. Hormaz is here to take us through the mid-caps that are moving around the trade. The index is at the day's low. Hormaz. Lowest point of the day for the broader markets, and there are plenty of stocks that are in the red in today's trading session. We start off with BSC, that is continuing to extend the losses. Profit booking continuing there after the downgrade that came from Jefferies yesterday. Obra Realty though is the top loser on the index, six percent down there as well. What is also extending losses now is Angel One after the management commentary failed to assuage concerns, and Naveen Florine too at the lowest point of the day. Earnings continuing thick and fast. It is the first earnings heavy day of the season, if you would like to call it that. And Emphasis is up six percent at the highest point of the day. Now earnings came out yesterday. Crystal also reacting to earnings off the highs of the day, holding on to gains of two and a half percent. And the two earnings that just came out a few minutes back, Dhan Lakshmi Bank and Central Bank of India, both have seen a sharp spike to the highest point of the day. Autos are spooked. Every single stock on the Nifty Auto Index trading with losses. All the large cap auto is seeing a bit of suffering and is no stranger to other stocks like Bosch, Ashok Leyland, TVS is off the lows of the day, still trading with losses of close to. 3% stocks trading on the back of very heavy volumes in today's trading session titagard is one stock that is bucking the trend as is latent view chennai petro and rvnl both off the highs of the day but still holding on to gains on very strong volumes and lastly some other gainers from the broader market space nalco is the one is a news flow related move for nalco kirloskar brothers has surged to the highest point of the day 6% higher there as is kpit tech seeing good gains in today's session back to you guys Thank you so much for that, Harmal. Quite a lot of movers, especially in the broader end of the market. It's also a good time to get a technical check on the market. Aditya Agarwal, the head of research and investment at Invest for Edu, joins us on the show. Good afternoon, Aditya. Uh, first up, you know, what are you making of the markets currently? Uh, do you see further downside from the current levels? Afternoon, Vivek. Afternoon, uh, Sonia. Thanks for having the show. Sonal, thanks for the show. I think markets uh, will uh, see some kind of a further cool off uh, or maybe downside from current levels. Uh, Twenty-four thousand seven hundred on the Nifty happens to be the recent uh, low from where we had seen a bit of a pullback. Uh, we are almost there to test that level, Vivek. And I think if that is broken, uh, we could be in for another three uh, hundred to about four hundred point correction on the Nifty. Uh, Bank Nifty too on the on the downside uh, has immediate supports close to about fifty one thousand. So fifty one thousand on the Bank Nifty and twenty four thousand seven hundred on the Nifty. These are two levels that I would watch out closely for the trading session, especially today and tomorrow. If these levels are held, maybe markets will claw back to levels of twenty four nine hundred and then twenty five thousand eventually. For the Bank Nifty too, if fifty one thousand level is held, fifty two thousand is something that can be seen again. 
what is interesting to notice is uh, some of the stocks are holding ground like uh, reliance industries after that big correction is holding ground uh, sbi uh, is holding ground uh, from, from the morning trade and and rather it is uh, seeing uh, some kind of a buying action as well if i talk about sbi specifically and some of the it names the large cap it names are also holding ground so i wouldn't be too bearish also at this point of time i would not trade the index per se wait out for these uh, key levels of 24750 and 51000 to be taken out if at all to initiate fresh short trade otherwise i would not trade the index wait for some kind of a consolidation in the second half of the trading session all right uh, so aditi what would your individual technical picks be in this case so so i have got a buy and a sell uh, the first stock that is on my sell radar is astral uh, stock has clearly broken down from a bearish flag pattern and i think uh, there is further downside in the stock uh, stock is down on good volumes uh, so at current levels also i would initiate a fresh short on the stock for a target of 11 uh, uh, 1750 to 1700 on the downside with a stop loss at 1900 on the upside uh, infosys is something which is definitely looking very interesting i know the results are uh, due for the stock but looking at this chart setup looks like uh, stock is headed higher from current levels so even at current levels i would be a buyer in infosys for a target of 2100 on the upside with a stop loss at 1930 on the downside thank you so much aditya you know for taking us through both your uh, market expectations as well as your stock specific picks let's now slip into a short break we'll get to chatting the management of stylem industries on their q2 numbers on the other side stay tuned Welcome back. You're still tuned into Midcap Radar. It's time to focus on Stylem Industries. The quarter two performance has been aided by better mix with double-digit revenue growth, but the domestic growth has been weak. Manav Gupta, whole time director at the company, is joining in now to answer those questions. Uh, Manav, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining in. Well, you know the export portfolio has done well for you this time, but uh, tell us what is the trend now? Uh, the quarter two uh, trends will they repeat in quarter three and quarter four as well? What's happening with export and domestic? Domestic volume growth. What's the target for FY25? Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, uh, to give a brief of Stylam, it's a 33-year-old company, and we have Asia's largest plant for laminates, based out of Chandigarh. So, uh, if you look at our numbers, uh, uh, we are coming up with a brownfield expansion uh, and investing around 225 crores, and the brownfield expansion is. expected to be operational by march uh, of this financial year so uh, if you see our numbers company has done well and we are seeing good growth in the coming quarter uh, and we uh, if we see laminates as a space india is now labeled around the world to be the best laminate manufacturing country for the world so this space is growing at a good pace with good margins and i feel that this uh, rally is uh, just started and things are yet to come better mana we you know you spoke about the growth has been good in the quarter gone by volume growth appears to have been muted the exports have done well but domestic industry growth hasn't done well so is it a function of demand you've also mentioned that there are certain capacity constraints due to which you focus more on exports this time around give us a sense of the industry trend currently in the domestic market and how is it that exports are panning out yeah so if you look at we have two plants one plant is operating at 95% capacity and the other plant is operating at 80 85% capacity so till our new capacity comes into play we understand there can be there will be a, a production constraint for us so as a management and as company we are focusing on better product mix uh, be it export be it domestic so our focus is to sell products with better margins and uh, the domestic if you look at our domestic front uh, the domestic for the last 3 4 quarters have been same because it is intentional and we are working on better product mix instead of commodities okay. and uh, so yeah 
Uh, so, Manav, in that case, what will FY25 end with in terms of volume growth? What's the target? Will it again be driven by exports only since you're talking about capacity uh, constraints right now? And realizations, they grew 6 and 8% respectively for both your domestic and export markets. Will this continue to be the trend? Are you taking price hikes in different markets? What's the realization trend looking like? Uh, so, if you look at our last quarter results and this quarter results, our uh, EBITDA has improved and it is between 20 to 21 percent and the f further guidance for uh, next quarters is that the EBITDA should remain similar because we have already as i told you we are already working on better product mix and as a company uh, uh, in if you look at the building material space h2 has always uh, been better than h1 in a more major building materials. So I feel uh, it to be similar for Stylam. And uh, for our next three year journey, we are expecting good strong 26 to 30% revenue growth uh, from financial year 25 to 27. Okay, um, Anna, you know, just uh, taking a different direction, our colleague Yash in May, you know, had reported a story talking about how Stylum Industries was in conversation with a Japanese company where the promoters were looking to offload a certain portion of the stake. Uh, there were talks also of, you know, an open offer coming through. Of course, you know, at that time, the stock price was a lot lower than it is currently. What is the current status of your conversation with the Japanese company? Uh, are talks to sell stake still on and will you be giving up control of the company? See, with uh, there is no intention to give the control of the company to anyone. At Stylam and at, as management, we are always open for good strategic partnerships and we are always open for good innovations. And if, uh, as I have already told you, that we are looking for 26 to 30 percent growth in our coming uh, few years in the next, uh, if anyone comes. Uh, and gives us a proposal where we can add value and this speed can be increased. We are always open. And regarding that uh, Japanese things, uh, the talks were on, and but we couldn't find value. Uh, so it, uh, it, 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 such talks are always there because we are a major exporter and we have excellent relations around the world. So, so all Manu, the top companies say... around... Yes, so can we say with the Japanese company, you're not going ahead, but in case there is any better offer that comes in, if there is any offer which gives you more synergies, you'll be open to sell some stake. No, we are, we are not open. We are always open to uh, add value to our uh, Stylum family, Stylum stakeholders. If someone comes to uh, and they can help us speed our uh, growth, so we are we will be always open for partnerships or strategic tie-ups but it has to bring significant value to the company okay so manav are you saying uh, if not an equity stake that you will sell you are open more to a joint business effort with uh, the japanese company or even that at this point of time is off the table that is off the table now, uh, oh. so uh, to elaborate i would say that uh, uh, Stylam, uh, if you look at our relations around the world, we have very good relations and with a new plant coming in, uh, we have nurtured our relation and uh, the supply chain is an essential in ingredient for all the major companies. And this supply chain, we, uh, Stylam has become a major uh, stakeholder in these companies and I feel going forward with our new plant play coming in it will act as a game changer because this plant has very different sizes which are not available in India but they are available around the world. All right, we take that point. Thank you so much for joining in today and answering all those questions patiently. I Ho uh, hope to be speaking to you very soon again. That's the word coming in from Stalem Industries. Very uh, positive on the growth going forward. They talk about how they uh, 
conversations did not fructify with the Japanese company, but they're always in conversations wherever something that adds value to their portfolio could happen going ahead. Uh, we'll slip into a short break, but before that, a small programming note as we do that. Uh, as we prepare to ring in the festivities this Diwali, tune into CNBC TV 18's Market Movers Forum 3 p.m. onwards on the 24th of October, featuring guests like Ram Agrawal, S. Naren, Nilesh Shah, and others to help your portfolio prosper this Diwali. Welcome back to Midcap Radar. Well, one stock from the Midcap IT pack that's doing quite well is Emphasis. It's in focus on the back of Q2 numbers. Rima joins in with the earnings fine print. Thanks so much for that. So Emphasis Q2 revenues positively surprised. The company's revenues have gone up by 2.4%, ahead of expectations of 2%. Margins, though, in line with expectation of 15.4%, expanding by 40 basis points. Profits are up 4.5%, and growth this quarter was led by the telecom media high-tech vertical, uh, that's called TMT, and it was also led by the BFS vertical. But in the conference call, which took place in the morning, the company said that A, they're reiterating their FI25 revenue guidance, which is basically growing above the industry, and they're also holding on to their margin guidance, 14.6 to 6%. The company said the overall pipeline has expanded by 23% on a year-on-year basis, but here's the important line. The BFS pipeline is up 43%, while the non-BFS pipeline is up 11%. They also said they are seeing an improving trajectory of TCV to deal. Remember earlier, companies were winning deals, but not all of it was immediately translating into revenue. It was a little slow in terms of moving uh, conversion into revenue, but now the company is seeing an uptick. Also, just you know, in the run-up to the earnings, there was some concern about the company losing out or having lost wallet share with one large logistics uh, company. Now, the company doesn't talk about individual clients but the in the analyst call you know the analysts were trying to probe the company that you know you did lose one client in their 150 million dollar bracket what happened uh, so the company basically said that you know this is a normal fluctuation quarter on quarter nothing specific to call about call out on any you know client or you know that you know client bracket or the logistics travel segment um, you know things could move around in one or two quarters so that's about it so nothing specific um, you know that the company said on that but on the whole the BFS recovery is on track, the pipeline is up 43% and the street is taking comfort from that. Thank you so much, Rima, for that and that important clarification as far as, you know, the logistics partner was concerned. Uh, well, the one particular stock that's moved to the low point of the day is IRCTC. There appears to be a news update indicating that advance reservation has now been curtailed from 180 days to 90 days. The stock is down almost 2.5% on the back of that particular development. We'll have to wait and watch, you know, the exact impact of this particular development. Uh, the next stock on the radar, you know, you just saw the results on your screen. That is Karur Vaisya Bank. Uh, uh, the net NPA as well as the gross NPA have contracted on a sequential basis. And the company has, and the stock has seen a bit of a spike from the day's lowest point. But with that, it's all the time we have on this edition of Midcap Radar. Mutual Fund Corner when we return.